So today we are doing a beginner's guide to using the Airbnb host app. Now I'm going to have the app here in real time so you could follow along step by step. I'm going to show you some of the basics and understanding. So when you get started with Airbnb as a host, you're going to have a better understanding of how all of this functions. Now I'm going to go off screen here in just a moment, and this is going to be just so we can focus mainly on what's here on screen for you and kind of break some of the stuff down. Now we have our listing right over here. We've been on Airbnb for several years now, and I want to show you some of these basics. Now, as we go through this, I will have resources in the show notes down below for you when it comes to signing up for Airbnb and some videos showing you some additional tools and tips for utilizing the platform. All right. So here on the app itself, we're currently looking at our listing tab, which is right over here. So if you have multiple houses that are listed or multiple units, that's all going to be here. But first and foremost, before we really dive so much deeper into this, I do want to show you here in the menu option with the three stacked lines. Let's click on this. This is going to be our menu page. And the reason I wanted to show this is because the hosting app and the regular usage for Airbnb are on the same account. So for here, we can switch back and forth between our travel and our hosting. So we know that we're in our hosting tab, obviously because of all the tabs down here, but because also this will take us to our regular usage of Airbnb. B. Now, since we are in the menu section, let's kind of break some of these things down here. We do have our reservations. These are people that are booked with us. There are additional sections like our today tab, as well as our calendar that will showcase these. So just a couple different spots that we can find the same information. We can also see our earnings right over here. So if you click in this section, you're going to see where you're currently earning for the month, what you also have coming in for the rest of the month, and then any upcoming transactions that you will have as well. Now here you also get some insights. So really good information as far as how many people are seeing your listing and how many people are inquiring about this, as well as being able to put a guide together for your current location of the different listings you have. Now, if you are going to be making additional listings or even your first listing, it can be right over here to go ahead and create that new listing. We actually have a full separate video on the step-by-step -step guide of opening up your first Airbnb and making that listing. We'll have that in the show notes down below for you. Now, here's where you can also find a co-host if you need somebody in support in the process as well. Plus, you can also host any experiences, which we haven't done, so we're not going to definitely go into that as a beginner's guide. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to our Today tab all the way on the left-hand side right over here. So in this page right over here, you're going to see your reservations and you're going to see a filter over here that says current hosting, upcoming, and then right over here, checking out, arriving soon, and then even pending reviews. Now, we only have one listing in this Airbnb, but if you had multiple, this is going to help you kind of filter out in and out with all the different things that are changing. So if we click on upcoming, for example, so here with this listing, we actually have two different guests coming in at a certain time period. So that's showing up right over here for us. So again, it helps filter out. So it keeps things a little bit cleaner in this process. We can message the guests. We can call them if we absolutely needed to. Or if you want to click inside of this area over here, it's going to take you to the details page of the actual dates, the information, the payout, everything that you need to know. And I'll show you how that looks like in just one second. So from here, we're going to get a lot more details on the reservation, such as the rating for the guest that's already staying, obviously when they joined Airbnb, and then some additional profile information. If we need to send or request any money from them, again, if we need to call or even message them here as well. So from down here, if we keep scrolling, we're going to see some more booking details, such as the number of guests, the check-in date, the checkout, the day that they booked, and then their confirmation as well. And then you can also see down here at the very bottom, I'm going to scroll, their cancellation policy that we had when they booked it, as well as the amount that the guest pays and the amount that the host actually earns. And I actually really love seeing this because it could be a little bit jarring sometimes for people to realize that what the guest pays and what you are actually receiving can be wildly different depending on taxes and everything else that's going on in your city and your state. So it's always really nice to see this information. And then if you keep on scrolling in here, you can add any notes for that given date. Maybe there are some things you need to update or clean up before that guest. So just has a heads up. And then they also have what they call their air cover. This is for hosts for protection. So this is going to be something where you can learn a little bit more on, but every guest that you book with here on Airbnb will have air cover. And then down here at the very bottom, you can do any changes to the reservation. Sometimes guests ask if they could stay longer or cut back their reservation. If you so choose to do that with them, you can go ahead and click here and go through that process. You can report if you absolutely needed to, or you can cancel the reservation, but keeping in mind some information when it comes to canceling. All right. So we jump back over here to the main reservation section where we are currently tabbed with the current hosting. You can see who we're currently hosting again, quick way to go ahead and message or call. And then if we want to get to that similar screen where we we're with the other guests, just click on their actual profile here and it'll go through all those same steps. Now, next up, we're going to go into the calendar tab down here at the bottom. All right. So here on the calendar tab, the first thing you want to know is which account you actually have listed up here at the top. So if you have multiple listings, you do want to verify that you're on the right tab. Since we only got the one, that's the only one that's going to show up here for us. 
So we're going to see a couple different things. First and foremost, if you see grayed out dates with no crossed lines on them, those are just blocked out dates that nobody ended up booking. If you see a date with a crossed out line in it, that's something that either we manually blocked off or they automatically blocked off for us for particular reasons, like making sure that we can clean up on time. Now, the other reason it could be blocked off is if you have a minimum stay and the two guests in between don't qualify for that next guest to book in. So for example, we have a five day minimum. So right over here, nobody can book between these dates. So it just doesn't work out. So Airbnb automatically blocks those dates. Same thing with these ones right over here. So you can see the current guest that is staying with the main Airbnb theme color. It's kind of like that reddish pink right over here. And then you could see the next guests that are coming in too. So you can see right over here where this pink over here on the 12th is kind of curved in there. That is their checkout date. And then the date that Obviously, they checked in is right over here up at the top. So it's really nice and easy to see. It's easy to inform any cleaners that you might have or even yourself to be aware of those dates for the check in and the check out. Now, if by chance you click on the profile or the name or even in that section that that guest is staying, it'll bring up their information like we saw earlier. So if you wanted to go ahead and do that with a particular guest based off of their dates, you can go ahead and click and get their detailed information. Now I scroll down to the calendar where we don't have any additional bookings right over here. And when you come into this section, I'll show you in the gear settings over here, you can actually qualify when the bookings become available for people to book here for you. So that way you can make sure you don't go too far or too short of a time period that you maybe see best fit for you. You can see here, we actually have two promotions and I'll show you just a little bit too how that actually works as well. And then you can see the pricing on these are based off of certain things that we set up in place as well as the software we, we use called price labs that we actually have a resource in the show notes below that will actually adjust these prices based off of events going on in our area, the weather, and a whole bunch of other things that we don't have to pay attention to on a daily basis. So that way it can manage that pricing for us. So any date you see here that doesn't have it crossed off or grayed out, these are going to be the dates that people can start booking with you as well. And you can see our current price points for each of those dates. Now, if you like to change the view of your calendar up here towards the top, they have that icon for the calendar. If you tap over here, you can look at the calendar as a year, or you can look at it as a list as well. So whichever way works best for you, we prefer our month view. And then if we click on the gear icon here to the right, that's going to take us over here to our pricing section. Now you can see here they have a smart pricing and you can have a minimum night price and a maximum and then it can have this toggled on. Like I said, we use price labs, which kind of overrides this anyways, just to kind of make things work a little bit better for us. Now, next up here, you can see we can offer discounts where you can give people discounts for staying for a week or for staying over a month, depending on what you prefer. And we showed earlier that there are some promotions that you can have going on. And right over here, this is where you can go ahead and add custom promotions. There are some limitations on the promotions, and there are also some benefits if you go over certain percentages to be able to expose yourself to more audiences to see these discounts. And then down here towards the bottom is where you're going to see additional charges so you can add cleaning fees pet fees and extra guest fees so if you click on here this is where you can go ahead and add any of those types of fees so that way you can charge them with your transactions keeping in mind that some of these can get really costly for people and choose not to stay with you so be very cautious with where you set these numbers all right so back in the pricing over here if we look towards the top there is also an avail availability tab if we click right over here this is where you can set your minimums i mentioned for our listing we have a five day minimum now one thing to keep in mind is if you tap over here the minimum is going to be five days, but there is also a customization based off of check in date. So if we click on here, you can actually choose what days qualify for that minimum, or you can extend that even further. So you could say, hey, if you're booking for Friday through Sunday, you can be a three day minimum, but it is based off of the check in date. So we'd probably want to just do Friday as a three day minimum if you chose to go that route. Or you can say, hey, if you're going to book on a Monday, it needs to be a minimum of six or seven days just based off of your own preferences or what works best for you and your listing. Now you can have a maximum of nights that you can have, but you can also make sure that if they do need to go over that 100 days or whatever time period, there is a little toggle over here once we clicked in that you can go ahead and let them request it a little bit further. But the 100 day maximum is just based off of automatic stuff. So this is just something that if someone's gonna stay for 90 days, it'll automatically let them go through. But if they need to stay for 101 days, they can still request, but it can't be an instant booking with you. And then you can also customize any trip lengths as well. Now over here, when we continue down with the availability, this is going to be some really important stuff here for you. So with the advance notice, this is going to be the minimum that somebody needs to give you an advance notice with to be able to book automatically, keeping in mind that they can still book with you in less than this time period, but they do need to 
connect with you first and you can message back and forth to see if it works with you, such as like if the cleaning has been done or if maybe there's something going on where you can't do that instant booking. So you can change this anywhere from the same day all the way to seven days. And then you can toggle this on right here where you can see allow requests for less than one day. So if you do not want them to be able to even request it, just toggle this off right here and they can't even send in that request for that. But since we do, we're going to have that toggled on and just keep it as saved. Now, next up is probably my most important experience that I've had with Airbnb, and this is the preparation time. So right over here, you can actually choose how many days Airbnb will automatically block before and after a check-in. And the reason this is important for us is because we had it at none for such a long time, and we ran into a couple times where people were uh, checking out and checking in on the same date. And that turnaround time can sometimes be a little stressful for us. So we did test it out with a one night before and after. And we just found out that two nights before and after give us a little bit more breathing room. And if we get things completed early, we can unblock those dates as well too, as needed. But again, do what works best for you and your area. But for us, having a couple of prep days really helps us out with getting the highest reviews and the highest satisfaction with our customers. Now, I mentioned earlier, you can also have up to a certain advanced time in the availability. So we have it for six months, but of course you could do anywhere from nine, 12, 24 months ahead of time, three months as well, or you can have all your dates set unavailable by default. Now we can have people request beyond the six months as well too, but that can't be again with instant booking. So if this is toggled off, there's no availability for them to even reach out to us and request it where this at least gives them the opportunity. So somebody can still message us if they are booking for something that's six months and one day away, but at least with this toggled on, that can happen. Now, there are some additional restrictions when it comes to checking in and checking out, and this is just for the dates that people can and can't check out. Now, obviously, Airbnb will just block it so people can't choose those dates as checkouts, so if it doesn't work for them, they won't even be able to book with you. So just something to keep in mind. And this is usually for if you have certain requirements or things to go through when it comes to the dates that people check in or when people check out. And down here at the bottom, you can also connect to additional websites. So if you have either other hosting sites or if you're using something like a Price Labs, you can connect your calendar to it, or you can also even connect multiple Airbnb listings on one calendar. All right, so we went ahead and jumped over now to our messages tab over here. And similar to the today tab, there is going to be a filter up here if you needed to filter through some of the different questions. And the way the message tab works is it's going to be with the latest message that you most recently received. And then you can actually see the listing on the background with the image. And then you can also see the guest photo as well, plus their name over here in the messages. Now you can see that we have obviously messages going through. Sometimes these are just automated messages we send out to guests, or sometimes these are messages coming in from guests as well. I'm going to quickly show you what it looks like to be in connection with this guest. So here in the messages, you're going to be able to see when your message is started, when the person booked, obviously the message you send the guests, the messages they send you. You can go ahead and do some auto replies. You also have the opportunity right over here to schedule some messages, send images, or share any recommendations. And what's nice is on the top right-hand side, you could see any details. So if they maybe ask certain questions based off of the booking, you can go ahead and jump right to that really quickly based off of what we saw earlier in today's video. Now, before we continue on with this beginner's guide, I did want to mention that if you are a small business owner, or if this is your first thing getting into small business and want to make money from this, we want to make sure that we're putting our money in a proper business bank account. So we want to recommend Relay Bank, which is a great small business bank account because there are no fees for having a checking and a savings account, getting your free debit card and being able to use all these tools at no additional cost for having a small business bank account. Now, our viewers get an exclusive $50 bonus for utilizing the link in the show notes down below to go ahead and open up their free small business bank account, especially if you're going to be using it for something like Airbnb to have your money coming in and your expenses going out. All right, so now we are here on our listing tab back to where we started earlier. And I wanna show you some things when it comes to your listing. First and foremost, if you have additional listings you wanna be making, you can click this little plus sign right over here to add them. Maybe you have separate rooms you wanna list out individually or you have additional houses you want to add. So obviously you can see right over here, this one is currently listed with that green little dot here for us. We're gonna click in this area here so I can show you some important things when it comes to your listing. So from here, it's first toggled into the listing editor. You can have your space as well as an arrival guide if you really needed to, which is always great to give people additional heads up. Now you have your photo tour right over here that you can add, making sure that you have a plentiful amount of photos and really bright colorful photos if you can possibly make that. 
You also got your title. It is limited to a certain amount of characters. And then your property type over here that gives people information as far as are they getting to rent out the entire house, a room, is it shared? All those kind of information right over here. You can get all of that information at the bottom. One little thing too, it's kind of cut off here at the bottom here, but you can actually view this as a customer so you can see what they are seeing, which is always really helpful because you can miss some things here on the back end. But when you go to the view section, you can actually see what this is going to look like. And it, it really honestly makes a world of a difference. Now from here, you're going to see the pricing and availability. We showed that in the other settings tab as well. So you can kind of do it in one of these two places. If you click on these, it'll take you to that section. So either way, it's going to work there for you. You're going to see where it has the number of guests available. I would recommend that you put this based off of the number of beds you have available. And if there's ways for people to sleep a little less comfortably, I would add that in the description, but not with the total number because you want people to be as comfortable as possible in their sleeping arrangements. And then you could add all your amenities as well too. Obviously anything that works best for getting more people to come in. Sometimes you need to purchase additional things to make those amenities available. So as we continue with the listing, you can add any additional accessibility features. It'll show the location, but here's the thing for the guests on the viewing end, if they haven't booked already, this won't give them the actual location. If you've ever gone and purchased an Airbnb listing, you're going to notice that you won't get the information until you are officially booked with that host. So just something to keep in mind, even though it shows it here, it's not actually going to be the official listing that they see on the other end. And then if you keep scrolling down, you're going to see your hosting information. Obviously, if you're just getting started, you might not have any reviews yet. No worries. You're going to go ahead and go through that process. How many years you've been hosting and your overall rating. If you have any co-hosts as well too. Now there is a setting over here for booking. So you can actually have some kind of requirements when it comes to getting booked automatically with you. So if you click on here, for example, it's going to show you that there is instant booking available, that the person might need to have a good track record. You could toggle that on or off and you can add any custom messages as well for all of those things, or even for all the bookings that have come through. So those are going to just be some of the uh, booking settings that we can have. Now, next up here is going to be with house rules. So if you click on here, this is going to be where you can set up some of the house rules, like if pets are allowed, if there are any events that are allowed, or if you can have a certain maximum amount of guests, it's going to be in the same tab over here as well too. And then your check-in and check-out times and any additional rules that you need to put in place as well too. So once you have all that, you can save that and then come back over here to the settings page. And then of course, any guest safety things that you have like carbon monoxide alarm, smoke alarm and exterior security cameras that might be present or not. And then in the next section here is for guest safety. So if you tap on here, you can choose all the different safety devices you have for your property. Now, next up here is going to be with the cancellation policy. So if we click on here for this particular listing, uh, you can see all the information here. First and foremost, the first box here is going to be where you choose which type of cancellation policy you have. You got to click this little pencil here and it'll show you all the different cancellations and what the cast and you have as far as protections here. And then there are a little bit of uh, additional steps you can take with each one of these as well. Now, something to keep in mind is if you switch these out, it doesn't switch it out for the guests who already reserved with you. So this is only moving forward with all future guests. That's why every guest will show which cancellation policy they have when they originally booked the listing because you get to honor that as well. So whichever one works best for you, you can go ahead and save on that. And then there's also the non-refundable option here too, which you can actually give your guests an additional 10% off, but you get to keep the payout no matter when they cancel. So even with this firm option right over here for cancellation, you can offer that 10% off if you wanted to. And then they do have a long-term stay policy, which you can be the same if you want to like ours is, or you can have that as a different policy if you need it to be a little bit more strict. And then down here at the bottom is a custom link. If you tap on here, it's going to give you the option to go ahead and add a custom link. Obviously it needs to be available to utilize. And then you can use that link to post on your social medias or any other sites that make it look a little bit cleaner when sending people to your Airbnb listing. Now, like I mentioned, this is a beginner's guide. We want wanted to go and understand the full basics when it comes to utilizing the Airbnb app as a host. So that way you can have a clearer understanding throughout this process. Now, if you want to sign up for Airbnb and haven't already done so, I'll have a link for you in the show notes down below to go ahead and do that sign up process, as well as all the additional resources and tools that we use to run our current Airbnb as hosts. Now, some of those links do give you a nice bonus for going through our links exclusively, and it does help us out to make more free content just like this for you. Now, speaking of free content, I'll have more resources in the show notes down below for video content, as well as this video right over here. So you can keep on learning and growing when it comes to setting up your Airbnb as a host.